since the beginning of our journey with Dark Souls, the Fire Keepers have guided and aided us along the way, be it directly or indirectly. But we've seen fundamental changes of how the Fire Keepers perform their duties. From Fire Keepers being corporeal manifestations of their bonfires and thus keeping the flame alive so that we may use its strength to grow. To a Fire Keeper who waits for her champion beside a bonfire that has long extinguished. These curiosities beg questions, but perhaps before we answer those, it's more important to answer what came before. To answer who was the first Fire Keeper. A firekeeper's sight is the topic of uncertainty, no doubt, but it is important when discussing the first firekeeper, which I'll explain about more later. For now, let me unravel, the best I can, the reason for the differences between the firekeepers of Lordran and the firekeepers of Dark Souls 3. The key difference being obviously their blindness, as the firekeeper in 3 tells you that it's forbidden for them to have eyes. But in Dark Souls 1, this isn't quite the case. Anastasia had her tongue removed. The Lady of Darkling is said to hide a hideous form under her armor. But the fair lady does seem to be blind, as when equipped with the Witch Ring and able to talk to her, she believes you to be Quelag. But something they do have in common is that they all seem to be prisoners, whether literally or of their circumstances which may have been the original criteria for Firekeepers, whereas by the time of Dark Souls 3, our Firekeeper seems more than willing to perform her duty. It doesn't seem to be bound to do so. Again, she is even waiting for her bonfire to be lit. And we also meet Arena, who is on her journey to become a Firekeeper. Though Ludlith does suggest that just like the Unkindled, the Firekeeper is a prisoner. But the main difference between the two sets of firekeepers we see is they're now forbidden to have eyes. As the eyes of the first firekeeper, found within the untended grave, state that the eyes contain the light that was lost by all firekeepers to come, and would otherwise reveal to them things that they should never see. And is probably why they don't seem to be in prison as removing their eyes would likely remove the odds of them abandoning their posts or the flame. So, it would seem that now Firekeepers, at least after the second linking of the fire, willingly accept being blinded to the light, or probably more appropriately being blinded to the truth of the world. Instead, they embrace the grandest and longest running lie to keep the Age of Fire alive and they remain willfully ignorant of the truth they shunned. Although, to be fair, I'm sure that as time dragged on and on, that it was far more ambiguous than that to the women who sought to become firekeepers. In fact, they seem to be treated with more reverence and respect now, as the firekeeper Tower Key tells us that after a keeper has served her purpose, she's led into true darkness, where she there enjoys her long-deserved sleep. And this long sleep, I believe, is a hint that leads us back to the first firekeeper. As the fire waneth, does she lie by the dark, all for the sake of man. Princess Filianor, the youngest daughter of the great Lord Gwyn, gifted to the pygmies and the ringed city to hold the dark at bay, to hide the truth from the world. Upon inspection of Filianor, we can see that some sort of darkness has leaked from her eyes, or from where I suspect are her empty eye sockets. The eyes of the first Firekeeper are said to contain the light that was lost, and in theory the absence of light would invite darkness, and perhaps that darkness in time would overflow, which I believe is what is spilling from where Filianor's eyes once were. Our Firekeeper tells us, Ashen One, my thanks for the eyes thou hast given. But Firekeepers are not meant to have eyes. It is forbidden. These will reveal through a sliver of light frightful images of betrayal. A world without fire. 
Ashen one, is this truly thy wish? The last sliver of light from Philinor's eyes reveal all the things she slumbers to hide. It looks beyond the veil that we only see after Philinor perishes, and we see the world covered in ash awaiting its last breath as the flame dies out. It also sees images of betrayal, which betrayal is hard to say. It could be the betrayal of her father and the gods who uprooted her from her home and gave her away with the enormous responsibility of holding the dark back. It could be the images of the betrayal of the pygmies by the gods, who were manipulated into believing that they and their soul were bad for this world. But what is a firekeeper without a fire to tend? We don't see Philinor stoking any flames anywhere nearby. The answer relates to the reason she slumbers to begin with, to contain the Dark Soul, and that started even during the war with the ancient dragons, with the seal of fire the gods placed upon the armor of early man, out of fear of the rising power of humanity. A seal that only allows the dark to grow so much. A seal to contain the dark from reaching its true potential. It started by being placed upon humanity, until the day it became placed upon the dark soul itself. It was in fact the same seal of fire that was transferred to their very soul when Gwyn linked the flame. Because without this seal, the dark soul would grow to threaten the Age of Fire. It would champion the Dark Lord to usher in the Age of Dark, the same age that Gwyn and the gods trembled at the thought of. So this seal of fire would need tending to, for if its flames faded, the truth would be shattered, and only Dark would remain. The Dark Sign is the flame that Philinor tends to, for she is its firekeeper. And when we see her demise, we see the Dark Soul usurped without resistance. Philinor saw all of this far before the events unfolded, and thus her eyes and therefore her light was lost with them. These eyes were likely a long forgotten, forbidden, and eventually passed around artifact, that when given to our firekeeper it reveals to her the truth of the world and of humanity to her. And since this is the canonical ending, it allows her to properly tend to humanity's fire but only opposite of its original keeper, Philinor. Rather, our firekeeper tends to the dark sign by resting the first flame that binds it from its mantle, and allows it to die out, progressing the world back to its natural cycle, as the light that was lost is found again. But one day, tiny flames will dance across the darkness, like embers linked by lords past. 